Thanks uh, to the uh, previous uh, speakers. Um, I'm Sherlock Licorice. I am coming from New Zealand. And today I will actually uh, answer the question, can genetic improvement enhance online code snippets? So the uh, basis for the talk, I suppose, is in some regard related to um, Prem's uh, earlier um, um, assessment around the reuse of code. Um, in this context, it was language, large language models, but um, equally we saw the um, reuse code uh, really nearly in today's world. Um, again, uh, touching on what Raul was just saying as well, um, with some inherent trust. So we sort of look at, um, to develop a community um, by improvement opportunities potentially. So the situation is this, um, we've got heaps of code online beyond the um, Q&A sites. Now we've got quite a few um, um, automatic generation of code happening. And, and, and as a result of that, of course, we, we were using it. And that is also uh, established, fully established in the academic community uh, where we can see reuse not only um, across open source projects um, and so on, but equally even amongst the developers on these sites, the contributors of these sites. So uh, how do we actually um, uh, sort of take this, I suppose, opportunity to sort of uh, help the community somehow? So the challenge is um, snippets can be uh, incomplete and, and of course uh, bug prone and, and equally, um, we've observed errors, uh, not only in Stack Overflow, but many of the platforms, um, quite quite significant errors. These observations extend students' work. So oftentimes uh, students would copy code from online, uh, unaware of, of the bugs in code, and, and I suppose present those in, a, in a assignments and so on, another um, example that they submit. Um, but, but errors also um, are, are prevalent in the open source community um, amongst pro proprietary developers and end users themselves report errors. A uh, popular error there uh, is, highlighted with the Nissan Connect EV where an user actually was, was able to see uh, code copy from uh, Stack Overflow with comments from that code actually visual, visible in the Connect system. So snippets are reused and they're available everywhere. So th this is a challenge for the community and the academic community is particularly aware of it. And so we've actually been researching um, these portals to see uh, what are the issues that are prevalent there and how might we, I suppose, um, support the community with solutions. So one specific study actually looked at security um, and found the uh, code copied from online to be reasonably insecure relative um, to code that is actually in the code system that isn't actually using copied code from online. And, and equally, um, code actually um, copied online was sort of assessed for the, the effort that is needed to make it usable. And at times um, in the effort, in the, in the sort of um, haste to sort of get code and get a solution, sometimes developers can take more time um, trying to perfect that code to make it palatable. Um, but equally, um, code has been assessed for um, cohesion and coupling and all that, where it has been proven to be at times not as um, good as one would expect it to be. So the community is uh, quite aware that there are issues with code online, but we still use these snippets. Um, and I think it would be hard for anyone to claim themselves to be without sin uh, in the relation to the reuse of snippets from online. So we sort of use these snippets anyway. The question is, um, of course, not if we know it will happen that we will use it. So the current state of play is as such that uh, recent surveys shows that um, much of the code that is actually uh, available online is not necessarily generated or provided there for reuse as we do. So typically code online, so that we can see that it is actually given pretty much for us to actually sort of extend and perfect and to, and to sort of provide, it, provide our solutions in a way that is not necessarily intended just for copy and reuse. So the thing is, um, the, the developers online and the people who are providing these contributions are not necessarily to be blamed from that perspective, largely because they don't expect that we will reuse the code that is available online. So they do provide quite a bit of it. So they typically would provide at least 
two to three snippets for each piece of um for each solution that is provided on a QA site, whether it's core or stack overflow, there's abundance of code for every question that is answered. And equally, um, snippets um, would, would be under 100 lines of code, suggesting again that the, the community there isn't necessarily uh, providing code wholesale to actually be wholesome and to solve all the solutions. But there are abundance of issues um, beyond readability and reliability issues. There are also uh, performance and security issues. And I suspect um, these large language models that are trained on online code potentially inherit many of these solutions as uh, Prem was just uh, alluding to. So there is um, th there are errors. There are quite a bit, bit of errors online. So we've been actually um, battling with this question of uh, how can we sort of help with the improvement effort so we know we're going to use it. We know there are errors. Um, can we sort of support the community somehow? So we've, we've sort of toyed with this question um, for a couple of years now. And, and um, me and my colleagues, um, uh, particularly in Australia, decided um, how can we sort of see how, how we might actually um, sort of use um, GI improvement techniques to have a look to see how we might actually large scale help with this improvement effort. So we've got a preliminary agenda here where we had about 8,000 snippets from Stack Overflow. Um, this uh, repository was used for other things. So we sort of had some Java code and we, we ran it through a static checker, PMD. So I, I'm sure um, you all know what PMD is, but just briefly, it's sort of a, um, a static analyzer that checks for anti-patterns, um, especially around various sorts of ports, um, from more readability-related ones to security. Um, and then we use GIN, and GIN is a genetic improvement um, framework. Uh, and genetic improvement essentially is nature-inspired computing. So it sort of looks at um, uh, evolving uh, a search space uh, in a way that we might be able to sort of uh, find the optimal solution to solve a problem. So in a nutshell, we sort of um, mutate the code using some criteria um, that actually assess subsequent to the mutation of fitness. And we've sort of promote more of the sort of stronger one, the one that passes the fitness is against the one that doesn't. So we sort of um, assess in the first instance here, performance related issues. So, um, so we sort of actually run um, PMD first, and we found quite a few errors, um, thir over 30,000 in this instance of violations. Of course, as we said, these code snippets weren't necessarily uh, weren't necessarily provided to be wholesome. So we understand that these um, violations were given. It, 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 it should be allowed in a way. Uh, we found 135 of the rules violated, and we singled out performance related rules. So stuff related to the use of strings and so on. Um, and then we actually run the, the gene random sampler and we mutate eight different types uh, of mutations. And we actually having done that, uh, found 770 patches um, that no longer had any performance issues. So the, the, essentially uh, the mutations actually solve these issues. And of those uh, patches, 58 actually had compilable code. So we can actually compile the code and use the code. Um, so we sort of checked to see uh, what was the sort of nature of the mutation that resulted in wholesome code. And largely they were delete related mutation, but there are also uh, uh, a bit of other mutations that actually work. Um, in, in particular, however, the ones that actually um, sort of um, resulted in um, most of the sort of solved issues were delete related. There's some copy edited ones as well. So this was encouraging in terms of what we found, but equally we found um, quite a few issues as a result of this as well. So we had, of course, false positives to deal with. Um, and, and, and of course that meant that sometimes errors were reported that weren't real errors. Uh, we needed to improve parsing and then of course um, crowdsource rules we, we were short on rules. Um, equally, we, we, we believe that we needed better sampling, uh, better code transformation, and of course, uh, non-functional properties we could not have actually detected. Now, I must caution that GIN is typically used with uh, test cases, but we didn't. So we run PMD, 
we run June and then we run PMD again. So in some regard, um, this our result may be inflated in that if we may have run some of the tests, unit tests, maybe some of the um, code may have failed. So we've got this published in um, this paper where we sort of followed up to look more in more detail at some of the mutations. And so we sort of provide this there if you wanted to follow up on that. Thanks, I, I should uh, extend thanks to the team. Um, um, but beyond that, two funding, funding sources that supported the work and also for the opportunity to present here, um, Greg and team. So I, I can probably repeat or sort of re revisit the question here. Um, and in some regard, I might say, as opposed as a statement, uh, I think genetic improvement might help um, to improve code. Thanks very much. Happy to take your thoughts. All right. Thank you very much, Sherlock. Um, again, questions coming in from our viewers. And the first one harks back to a question asked earlier. Who gets the credit for writing the code that's produced by these sorts of genetic algorithms? So, so the genetic algorithm in this context is used to improve the code. Um, I suppose if we sort of look at um, um, Copilot or, or one of the, the large language models, um, in, in reality, I think we don't have legislation to sort of um, really police and to sort of look after this paradigm as, 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 as we should. I think with time, um, we're going to get there. But I think in, in the context of um, genetic, genetic improvement, genetic improvement is just providing a framework with which uh, we might perform code experiments. Here, the, the mutations um, are done to improve the code. Code is online and it's actually, of course, open for use. Uh, in the case of Stack Overflow, for instance, it, it's given the API, the, uh, the SQL engine is given for us to query uh, as it is. Um, whether or not that should be allowed at the community at the moment, I suppose, isn't quite matured and ready to deal with that. So in the, in the, in the um, current uh, instance, we, we use it as it's available. Okay. And another question is, are these genetic algorithms fast enough that they can be used in real time to suggest code improvements or code alterations as the code is being developed? That's a very good question. So I, I think um, uh, for the most part, the, the more extensive frameworks will need um, computing resources. So it's 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 not gonna be easy for, for someone um, in an environment with low resource computers to actually use these frameworks. The thing is, however, I think in most contexts, developers um, got the sort of the framework or the environment that will allow us to use these algorithms with ease. Um, and, and more and more, they're designed for optimization such that it, it, it is possible that we would be able to leverage them. But as with everything else, um, it, it's sort of, it's, there's no one size fits all, I suppose. It's about having an assessment of your reality and then, of course, retro, retrofitting a solution to suit your case. Mm 